Welcome to Flutter Teacher. This is basically a different video than the regular videos. One of my friends asked me a question. Is there any way to access static variables of class through an object? And you know what I answered him? I just wait for a while and answered him. Yes, there are two different ways to do this. Means using two different approaches, it's possible to access static variables of class through an object. So how it is possible? Let me explain the technique number one. So for this, let me create a class. So I will name this class as say class test. Inside this class, let me write say static and count. So count is basically a static variable that I want to use uh, for this example. And you know by default, if you want to use count, we can't access it uh, through an object. We have to simply access it by using the text dot count. That is by using the class name. So uh, the technique number one is to define the functions inside uh, the class. That is to define methods in the class. So one method is such a that allows you to get the data, and the second method allows you to uh, basically update the data. So let me define the method that allows me to get the value of count. So here I can write int. Let's say I can define method as let's say get count, and for this method means uh, from this method I can return the value of count. So let me write here say count. So it's going to return the value of count. That's fine. Let me define another method. I can write here let's say say count, and for this count let me pass the value. Uh, whatever value I'm passing, let me apply the value to count. So here I need to write, let's say, count is equals to value, and that's fine. Now you can observe here uh, we have a static variable, and in order to get the value of this static variable, I have defined a function called get count. So this is simply tell me the value of count, and to update the value of count, we have a function called set count. Basically, a very important thing is the get count and set count. They are not the static one. They are the uh, instance methods. So, in order to access this gate count and set count, we need an object. So, this is the way. Uh, number one, it's possible that we can access this count through an object. Let me explain this one uh, using the main function here. So, let me define my main here. So, we have main. And first of all, uh, let me create two different instances of this test class. So we can write here, let's say test. Say t1 is equal to test. We go to first instance, and let me copy and paste this line to get the another instance of this test. So I can write say test t2 here. So I got it's test t2. Another instance. Now let me print uh, the value of this uh, count. So I can write here let's say test dot count. And of course it's possible because it's a static field. So we can access it by using the last name. And uh, let me change the value of this one by using t1. So I can write here let's say t1 dot set count. So set count allows me to change the value. So let me change the value to 10 because by default I have set the value to 0. Change it to 10. And even I can print the values. So let's write here print uh, the value. So I can write t2 dot get count. So get count will give me the value of this count here. And finally, again let me print the value of this count. So I can write test dot count again. So that's going to print the value of test. Sorry, the value of count finally. Now uh, one observable thing here is uh, as this count is the static variable, so there will be a single copy of that one. So if I write test dot count, if I write say t1 dot set count, or if I write test t2 dot uh, get count. So whether I'm using set count or get count or by t1 or by t2 or by using the test dot count, all these three techniques will have access to only single count variable in the class. So let me run this program and you can observe here the value of test dot count is basically zero. And when I change the value of t1 dot count, that is t1 dot set count, I got the 10 by using this t2 dot get count. And finally, when I'm checking the value of test dot count, still it is 10. So this proves that I have only one count variable for the class because it's a static and I can access it by using the class name and even it's possible to access this one using the instance t1 and t2. Now let me talk about the second technique. Uh, the second technique is very much similar to the first technique. The only difference is instead of using normal functions, I will use the getters and setter that are based on this count variable. So first of all, let me define the getter here. So I can write it say int and I can write a get. So uh, here I will use the name as let's say count value. So count value is basically name of my getter, and through this I can return the value of count. So let's write here count. That's perfect. And now let me define the setter here. So I can write a set, and again the name of the setter is say count value. So let me use the V capital, and let's pass some value here. So I can write int value, and let me apply this value to the count. So I can write here count is equals to value. And that's fine in the function. Sorry, uh, that's fine inside the class test. Now uh, I need to make some changes in the main. So we should not write say this is equal to this. We have to write like say t1 dot count value. So let's change it to 20. 
and let me write here t2 dot say again i need to write the count value so that's going to work fine here and now let me rerun the program here and you can observe here initially the value of this test dot count that i will get here is a zero and when i just change the value say t1 dot count value to 20 and when i print the same value using t2 i will get a 20 here and finally when i print the same value using test dot count i'm getting the value of 20 here that's it for this video see you guys in the next video if you have the doubts or difficulties related to different topics in Dart and Flutter, feel free to comment that one so that I can create videos for you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.